Hello, in this presentation we will take a look at QuickBooks Registers features within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay, we're going to go over the feature of registers within the software. If you have the backup file, you can restore that by going to the File and Open or Restore, which we have seen in a prior presentation. We currently have the open windows list open here, so we're going to open that. I recommend having that open if it's not yet open by going to the view tab at the top and open window list. The only open window is the home tab here as seen in this area to open the home tab. If it is not yet open, we want to go to the company at the top and home page, and that'll give you the home page open here. We're going to be taking a look at registers this time. Registers we typically think of as a check register, but registers can be used in many different areas of QuickBooks for many different accounts. And it's one format that we can kind of avoid the use of debits and credits, which can be very useful to beginning users and to people that understand debits and credits. It could be helpful in talking to other uh, individuals on how to do certain procedures and it could be helpful just to get another way of inputting data within the system. We talked about inputting data using these types of forms within the home page a little bit. We will, of course, continue to cover that as we go through the process of entering data. But we want to look now at the registers and why uh, those may help in some situations where the forms don't quite do it. Some unusual, typically, situations not unusual in that they never occur but they don't occur all the time meaning those types of transactions that aren't happening day to day will not always be on the normal day to day homepage flowcharts and therefore we'll need some other way to enter that information things like purchasing equipment things like taking out a loan things like the owner investing uh, more money into the business and uh, those types of items so first, I want to open up the major financial statements once again, those major reports, which are the balance sheets and the income statement by going to the reports drop down up at the top, scrolling down to company and financial and going down to the balance sheet. I want to get really good at opening these two reports. They are the main reports. They're the ones we want to be going back and forth to at all times to see what's happening. These are the end results. So we're going to go to the balance sheet. And I'm going to go to the customized reports up here instead of changing the date there so that we can have a date range. Selecting customized reports, we're going to change the date range from 010121, which is January 1st, 2021, the year we will be working in, to 123121, that year end being December 31st, 2021. Then we'll select OK. We're going to do the same thing for the profit and loss. Going to go to reports up top, scrolling down company and financial. That first report is the profit and loss report, the income statement type report. We're going to give us the same date range, that being 0101212, January 1st, 2021, to 12.31.21, December 31st, 2021. Now, when we look at these reports, I'm going to go back to the balance sheet over here, back to the balance sheet. We can see that a lot of these items, if we double click on cash, as we saw last time, are driven by the forms. So here we have a checks, clearly, and the transfers. We've got a pay bill check here, liabilities. These, if we double click on these, we see the forms that we saw last time. We see a check, of course, if I double click on a check. We see, uh, if we look at the uh, deposit, we see a deposit. If we click on the deposit, those familiar forms that we looked at last time. Closing that, closing this. If we go back to the profit and loss and select a different type of account, such as merchandise sales, we'll see, of course, the form of inventory, uh, invoice, and the sales receipts. If we double click on those items we will see an invoice and sales receipts so closing those back out those are the major things so if we go back to the home page that will drive the day-to-day -day transactions we're going to enter bills we're going to pay bills we're going to create invoices receive payments 
These are the things that happen on the day-to-day -day basis, and therefore there's a standard flowchart for them to happen. There are standard forms to be set up. QuickBooks will then uh, generate everything using those standard forms. However, there are some types of things that don't have a day-to-day. -day. They're not part of the day-to-day -day transactions, although they happen from time to time. Things, things like I've taken out a loan or things like buying equipment possibly. And so for those type of things, usually oftentimes we will use some other process. Uh, for most accountants, you, the default would then be to go to the register, to go to the company and uh, use register icon, make a journal entry. We would make a journal entry. So we're going to say, I'm going to make a journal entry because I don't know where else to go. We might even go to make a journal entry when we have somewhere else to go because we're just we like doing journal entries and doing the debits and credits here. But um, this, if we want to not use the journal entry for some of these things, some of these processes, we can use the registers. And later on, we'll even use the registers to do like the adjusting entry process, which typically is using uh, journal entries. So we're going to do as much as we can without uh, the journal entries, although we will explain the debits and credits when we talk through them. And uh, you do, and if you want to understand these forms from a debit and credit perspective, we can still understand those as we make as we make these forms. We can see what's going up, what's going down. QuickBooks is driving things with debits and credits, but we can also get a feel for it with a plus and minus. We'll get mixed up, we'll get turned around sometimes from time to time, but with we can get we can get a feel for it by using debits without debits and credits, just plus and minus by using registers. So we're gonna close this and look at the registers then. So if we, the most common register, if we go to the banking up top and we scroll down to use register, most common register is the checking account. So if we select that, we see the checking account, first one selected, that's the main register we think about. So if we go to the checking account, we see a familiar looking register. You should be comforted by the register. We all have seen those at the back of the checkbook possibly. And so we have the register and that's one place that we can enter the data. And it's actually, it's a good place to enter data if we are just entering the data uh, to populate QuickBooks in order to help us generate reports, possibly uh, writing actual checks, possibly outside of QuickBooks for a small business. Or if we're getting used to QuickBooks, you might want to take your bank statement and put it directly into the check register, something like this, where we have the payee, let's take a look at the payee, the amount, and then we have an added uh, account we need to be selecting. So there's always got to be two accounts. The register means we are in a particular account, meaning this means we're dealing with the cash account, the checking account, increasing or decreasing the checking account in accordance with either a payment or a deposit, the other side go into this account, and, it, and this is accounts payable. Now note that it doesn't tell us that we're debiting or crediting accounts payable. It doesn't even tell us if accounts payable is going up or down. QuickBooks just says, I know what this is. This is increasing, uh, this is decreasing cash, and I know that's a credit, and I know that this is a liability, and I know that that's going to have to go up, So, um, and I mean that's going to have to go down in this case, so we're going to debit it. So. We can't really get all of that uh, unless we understand the debits and credits, unless we understand what's actually happening, but we can kind of see it. We can say that if I went to this check and looked at the cash account, clearly it would be going down, it being a payment. And if we went into the accounts payable, then we should see this 365 too, and we can see what it's doing. So if we, for example, went to the balance sheet, let's see if we can see if I'm right on that. And we scroll down. So we're on the balance sheet in the, in the open windows list here. Scrolling down to the liabilities section, accounts payable, and then we're going to double click on that accounts payable detail. And we're scrolling down to, I believe it was this check that we had. Is that the one we were looking at? Let's go back over here, back to the checking account. It was the uh, 365, back to the transaction detail. And Looks like it was this 365 right there. So we see that item and we can see what it's doing to the to the balance of the activity here. It was at uh, 1,565 and it's bringing it down a decrease to 1,200. So if we go back and forth, we can get an idea of what is happening from the register to the financial statements, looking at the detail 
always, always, I recommend doing that, taking the time, seeing what's happening. And then we're going to close this back out. And if we are back in the register here, this is the main register. So this is a very useful register, clearly the cache registers, first register type thing we think of. Closing this back out, going to the home page. Now, typically when we think about cache, we often think that we're going to be driving that with a deposit and we're driving that with typically the checks that we make. But it is possible for us to enter these directly into the register. Whether we enter them directly into the register or not, we will typically still see the deposit form, meaning if I entered something into the register as a deposit and then I double clicked on it in terms of the balance sheet, back to the balance sheet, and if I scroll up to the checking account, double clicking on it, if I click on any item here, whether it be a deposit or a check, whether I entered it into the, uh, the register or whether I used a deposit slip or a check, it will then show, in the case of a deposit, a transfer funds or deposit check. So I'm going to close this back out. If we go into a deposit here, we see our deposit here. So typically we'll still see the form. We'll, we're not going to go back to the register. So we're still driving things with the forms even when we're entering with the register. Even if we enter the checks directly into the, to the system, so if I entered this check directly into the check register and I double click on it, I'll still see a check form. I won't go back to the register when I drill down. So remember that these forms, even if we enter in a different format, are usually the driving factor. So even when we use the register uh, and we drill down on the data, we're not going to see exactly what we entered in terms of the register. But the registers are still really useful. So if we close this back out and close this back out, that's the main register. Now we can use the registers for any account. So say we had some type of transaction we didn't know what to do with. Maybe we bought uh, furniture and we just financed the entire thing. Well, that might be the case where I don't know where to put that because I can't go to the check register because there's no cash affected. And so what do I do? I don't know. I don't know where to go. It's not on the home tab, of course, because that's not a, that's not a normal transaction. It might go through accounts payable, but if it was a loan, we'd want to put a, a more extended loan, you know, so that we can track interest and everything on it. So again, typically we would go to a to a journal entry on something like that. An, an accountant might go to a journal entry uh, instinctively for that, but uh, if we don't do that, we might we could use the registers. So and I can go to the registers here, banking, and use register. And I can pick any register that's going to be a balance sheet account. So for that example, uh, we are purchasing furniture and equipment, and it's a fixed asset. So it, so notice I have all the account types. I got cat. I've got the checking account. I've got the receivable. I've got uh, current assets, the fixed assets, the credit card, the liabilities, long-term liabilities, and equity. We don't have income. We don't have expenses. Those are temporary accounts. So those are the income statement accounts. Uh, so it only, you know, we'd have to choose any side of a transaction. There's always two accounts that's going to be a balance sheet account. So in this case, both of them are balance sheet accounts. We'd have something like a liability, like a loan payable, and something like a uh, the furniture and fixture. That's what we're going to buy. So I'm going to choose the furniture and fixture because it's easier for me to know about what we're going to buy. So I'm going to select that register. And then this is, a, it looks just like the check. Well, it looks a lot like the check register here. And we have this register, and this register means that it is the register for the um, furniture and fixture. And it has an increase and a decrease. So without knowing debits and credits, I can just say, well, I know I'm going to buy furniture and fixture, so I'm going to say it increases in this case. And then the other side, I just need, then I just need to know where the other account needs to go. I don't need to know it's debited or credited. I just need to know like the other side needs to be going the other way and then QuickBooks will say oh well if we're increasing this it must be a debit to the asset account of uh, the furniture and fixture and if you're picking the other side being a loan payable liability then that must be a credit increase in the liability and through a little bit of trial and error uh, we can put these things together uh, with these registers so if we were to do that then uh, and, and if I close the register and we went to uh, the balance sheet 
and we scroll down to not that far furniture and equipment double click on that item there's the 5000 right there now because there's there's no nothing really driving this there's no form this is a, an atypical a non unusual it is an unusual not an un, unusual it's an unusual transaction because it doesn't happen all the time we don't always do this so it doesn't have a form that drives it so it will say right there just the general journal that's where we entered it if we double click on it it actually does take us to the general journal rather than another form because this again one of those transactions it doesn't have another type of form now if we were to open the other side the other journal we could do that let's open this loan payable and see what this journal entry did on this side to the general journal for loan payable that sounds like like a good time so let's go to um banking once again and we're going to go to use register and select the drop down and we're looking for loan payable so we'll scroll down that should be in the liabilities section and is it a current loan pay i don't think so i think it went into loan payable here long-term loan payable that's the one that's the one so we're gonna say okay and I believe that uh, it's this one right there there it is so in this case it increased the loan payable so by putting it into the other register of course it it also affected this register and we have this information there so that's just a quick example we won't be using the registers a lot and you won't typically uh, use the register if you're running a business a lot on a day-to-day -day transaction because once your lists are set up once your chart of accounts are set up this flow section the vendors the customers the employees the payable section the receivables and the employees will be the sections where we will typically be entering data and those unusual transactions those ones where you kind of scratch your head and go i don't know there's no cash affected here i'm not entering a bill uh, it's not an invoice i don't see any normal type of thing here are often the ones where you're going to ask if you have the i wouldn't and i'd recommend having an outside uh, cpa firm or accountant or bookkeeper to to guide you with those type of things but oftentimes if you want if you're looking to put those together yourself without a um, debits and credits those registers are useful to use all you need to do is find the balance sheet account side of the transaction you're working with and find the register for it and then decide which way it's going up or down and that will help you guide you through the information a little bit of trial and error you can uh, you can put a lot of a lot of transactions uh, together and figure out how they would work in that format